Hello. Well, today I want to talk about a film that is 50 years old this year. It is a classic, and it um, <clears throat> is you know, regarded as one of the best films of all time, and also one of the best war films of all time. Um, and that film is Patton, um, starring George C. Scott and Carl Malden. Um, directed by Franklin J. Schaefer, yes, yeah. and um, written by Francis Ford Coppola and Edmund H. North. Um, what's interesting about this film is uh, Coppola, in an introduction on the DVD and also the Blu-ray, said that his version, uh, he got fired um, uh, from this. Uh, mainly because of uh, the beginning of the film, uh, the American flag, and then uh, Patton's speech. You know, you don't see the 20th Century Fox logo, and they just thought that went on too long. It just wasn't, you know, very good. And there's also this whole stuff in the film about um, reincarnation, like Patton would be, was at certain places, that had very uh, historical significance. Like a battle was waged somewhere, and he says like he believes he was there. Like in a past life, he was somebody that fought um, in a battle. Um, and they just thought that was just very kind of basically nonsense. And, um, uh, you know, and you know, the uh, person of George as Patton is very, you know, um, in many ways there's quite a bit of a mystery about him. I mean, yes, there are books about him, but there seems to be sort of this aura about him. Like, just seem to be a very larger-than-life uh, person. Um, interestingly enough, you know, George C. Scott wasn't sure about playing Patton himself because he thought there wasn't really a way to do him justice um, just because of you know, um, you know he was a great general you know people really don't debate that but people do think uh, some of the methods of how he was a leader in the military were you know they were questionable especially since you know he did slap soldier and um, you know, that wasn't uh, obviously looked uh, looked at favorably, um, and it is depicted in the film. Uh, and, you know, he does, uh, you know, <laughs> if you've never seen it, you know, there is a consequence to that uh, for his actions. Um, but it is a, but you know, General Patton is a very uh, fascinating person, fascinating character, to say the least, especially in this film. And uh, George C. Scott gives an incredible performance. I think, if anything, that's something that uh, people really take away from this, in particular, aside of it being a fantastic film, um, the performance of George C. Scott is incredible. You know, definitely, I think, one of the best performances uh, ever uh, by an actor. Um, Rod Steiger, um, uh, yeah, he uh, he actually was offered to play Patton, and he turned it down and said that uh, that was like the biggest regret of his whole career. Of all the parts he turned down, Patton was the one that he regrets not doing. Um but George C. Scott uh, delivers a fantastic performance. Um, one thing of note that is quite different is, you know, the voice of Patton. Patton had a, a fairly high-pitched voice, whereas, uh, you know, George C. Scott has a, you know, he has a deep, gruff voice. <laughs> sort of fitting of uh, the kind of uh, person, the character of Patton that we all know from, like, books and also this film. 
and just the stories of Pat, and you just kind of get. And that's not the case at all. Um, in fact, h him swearing quite a bit is actually to compensate for his higher pitched voice. You know, he was in such a high rank, high ranking in the military, you know, in the army. And he was an important leader in the uh, in the in World War Two, very instrumental in many battles, and yet he had this high higher pitched voice, and so he would frequently swear quite a bit. Um, in fact, in the opening, you know, he says fornicating. Well, just replace that with the other word that he would use and there you go that's then the speech we hear at the very beginning would be a bit more accurate to uh, uh, George Patton um, but the film is rated PG so you know, I'm not gonna have him swear like that in the film um, well, also there's this you know it's green but I took this off because it wasn't holding on too well, but yeah, just keep it with it anyway. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic movie. Won Best Picture at the Academy Awards and director for Franklin uh, Schaffner. Schaffner? Yeah. I, I, I mispronounce names sometimes if you can't tell. Um, he actually directed Planet of the Apes before this film, and you know, in a way it's sort of like you would never assume the director of Planet of the Apes would make Patton, or a film like Patton. But uh, he, he really liked the material, and, uh, yeah. Originally, uh, Coppola's script was rejected, and they had scripts that were, were not seen to be very good, but then they remembered, oh, here's this script, and it was by Coppola, then, um, Edmund H. North got credit because, you know, by the time they started to work on this, the, um, Francis Ford Coppola was now a writer. He was now a writer. And so, yeah, not, not, not just a writer, I guess a director. And so he was busy doing other films. And at the time the film came out, he began to work on The Godfather. So he was doing some other films, so he wasn't able to, come back and sort of uh, make the film uh, write this make the script uh, better so they had somebody come in Edmund H. North and he uh, uh, wrote a bit more here and there and wrote enough to warrant credit but basically what a lot of the bulk of what uh, Patton was in the script was uh, Coppola's and I heard one story that it's because of Coppola's script, which is why uh, George C. Scott did the film. And, of course, there's others that people weren't too fond of it, but they remember the Coppola script, so that's why that was used. Could have it Either could be true, but it's interesting how, you know, while uh, you know, George C. Scott had reservations about playing Patton because of the kind of person he was and how it would be difficult, just the story that Coppola's script was just so interesting and unique and sort of kind of did justice enough to Patton that he wanted to play the character in the film. I think that's just fantastic. Um, and he won an Academy Award um, for writing, Coppola did. Um, and he says that is, he believes because he won the Oscar for Patton, and that is why, you know, he didn't get fired from The Godfather, because, you know, Paramount hated pretty much every decision he was making on that movie, so when he won an Academy Award for writing Patton, they probably thought it would be kind of stupid or silly if they just fired Coppola when he just won an Oscar. They didn't think that would be very good. Um, and, of course, that film was uh, really good also. Um, but Patton is an incredible film. One best picture and 
obviously notably uh, George C. Scott, uh, he famously uh, declined the Academy Award when he won. Apparently he was watching a hockey game. And he says the reasons he didn't, he, he turned it down and even uh, he uh, rejected the nomination was because he thought the idea of competing against other actors was just nonsense and was kind of like just dumb. He also, I guess, criticized the voting process as to how uh, people win. wasn't fond of that. And he also called the Academy Awards a big meat parade and never wanted any part of them. And so he wasn't. Um, I think that's it, quite interesting. Especially since nowadays people look at the Academy Awards and you know, people are quite critical of them. Sometimes certain movies win for political reasons or because, you know, someone wins because it was their turn. They never gotten a, an Oscar. Um, rather than the best person wins for the year uh, where they were declared the best, uh, be they they were nominated, didn't win, or they were just snubbed and didn't even get a nomination, but they later win for another film that isn't as good. You know, and that's for any category, not just acting. Um, but Patton is a film where the Oscars it won uh, truly deserved the all of them. I think Jerry Goldsmith uh, should have won an Academy Award for his score. Um, he won an Oscar for uh, The Omen, for that score, and that's a fine score, um, but he definitely should have won for this film. Uh, yeah, and um, another thing I want to say about Patton is I was like about 12 or 13 or so, around that age when I first saw this movie, and I was just really enraptured, especially by the performance by George C. Scott. He gave such a commanding performance. Where you, you all, your attention was always on him, and it seems like that's what a lot of people thought about Patton, uh, regardless if you liked him or not. He, uh, he just had that presence of everyone looks at him. Um, George C. Scott definitely has that presence. Um, but yeah, I love this film. It's an incredible film, you know, showing uh, his uh, his experience throughout World War Two, the various how, how important he was. It's very inc uh, very fascinating, um, and there's still you know quite a bit about the guy when you're watching the film that it's sort of a bit of a mystery. You know quite a lot about him, and yet there's so much we don't know about him at the same time. Sort of like uh, uh, Lawrence of Arabia, uh, the performance P uh, Peter O'Toole gives as T.E. Lawrence. We spend so much time with him in the film, and yet by the end of it there's still this mystery that uh, that is there about Lawrence. And uh, that definitely applied with O'Toole's performance in that film, and I think that applies with uh, Scott's performance in Patton. Um, all the other actors in this film are excellent, but obviously George C. Scott really, this is his film. This, he really makes George Patton, he really becomes him. And um, regardless of the differences of his voice, uh, he, he, his performance seems very, you know, it seems to be very close to the person, uh, the real person that you could really get in a film. Um, obviously, you know, you can't really, uh, uh, capture the real person unless it's the person themselves, but in terms of, uh, film, this seems like a, as close of a, a depiction of him as 
much as we can ever get uh, on film. And Scott really delivers an incredible performance. Um, and I'm always in rapture whenever I watch this film. It's so incredible. I love it. Um, yeah, I could go on and on about why I love this film for the performances, the direction, the writing, the production value, the score, and everything. Is but you know it's you know then it's like well when when do you end? Uh, I just love this movie. It's I don't know where I will put it on uh, my uh, favorite list of for my favorite films, but it would be somewhere. I don't know. It's not in the top twenty. Um, have that nailed down but it could be in my top 25 or 30 somewhere around there i do rank this quite high highly um i know there might be some who don't um and that's fine um but i really love this film i don't watch it all the time but uh this is also a movie where i think every so often it's good to watch it you know one of those movies that you know, if it's not your favorite movie, you know, you may not watch it all the time, but it's one that's always worth watching every so often. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, I hope everybody's had a good day and a good week. Hope your weekend is great. And also here in America, hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Hope that went well and hope your Thanksgiving weekend goes well also. Um, yeah, I just, uh, hope you're all safe, wherever you are in the world, not just America. <clears throat> um, and yeah, take care. Um, yeah, have a great day, great weekend and week. I'll see you all next time.